Hey guys, it's Sophie. Welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, welcome. So for today's video, I'm going to be doing like a get ready with me for a kind of virtual competition type thing, and I'll also be giving you guys a bit of like a life update because there's a lot that's been going on lately and just answering some of your questions. I've done my hair already. Well, I've done my ponytail, which just consists of like putting a ton of gel in my hair and combing it back. So that's that, and I'm just going to continue on with my hair now. My process for doing my hair is basically the same as it is for training, so... It's not much different other than putting gel, hairspray, and a hairnet. I've had people ask me to do competition hair and makeup tutorials on this channel, but um, I didn't really want to do them if I wasn't competing, so I'm going to kind of give you guys an idea of what my process looks like for doing hair and makeup. I know this is not going to be a full tutorial, but at least you guys kind of get to see my process. And the reason I'm doing this is because we have, it's called a technical trial. so. It's not really a competition, but we're filming our routines at our own gyms and then sending them in to be judged. We are recording over three days, so today is Wednesday. We did we started yesterday, and then we're recording today and tomorrow as well. So we have to film eight routines, and we just divided it up into the three days. Not gonna lie, yesterday was not great, but hopefully today will be better. Yeah, and right now I'm just putting a bunch of pins in my head, as I usually do for training. Also, this is my giant tub of gel. Before yesterday, I hadn't done my hair and makeup in like 14 months. I think since February, no, since March last year, because I did a photo shoot in March, but I hadn't competed since February of last year. Oh man, I just lost a pin. <laughs> My bum looks really flat today. <laughs> now, doing my hair actually doesn't take me that long anymore. It still takes me like 15 minutes for a training day, but for competition it doesn't take that much longer. I'd say less than half an hour, which is good for me. I know some people can do their hair in like 5 minutes, but I'm very picky with my hair. I did have a couple people mention um, the World Cup in Baku since they saw my name on the list, and basically I just wanted to explain, we were supposed to go to the World Cup in Baku. Um, the day this video is coming out, Sunday, May 2nd, is the day I was actually supposed to leave. But we ended up making the decision to not go because, well, a couple of reasons. Um, one, the COVID situation is getting really bad in Canada and they were talking about closing borders. And if they do, I don't want to get stuck in Europe. That would be an issue. And just also all the travel, all the risks, all the uncertainties. We still hadn't really finalized a lot of plans, so that made things difficult. Basically, the plan of the trip was to do the World Cup in Baku, then to go train in Bulgaria, in my coach's hometown, and then do an international competition in Romania. But also, our hotel in Bulgaria that we usually stay at was closed, and there was just a lot of stuff that wasn't confirmed yet, and so we just thought it would be safer not to go, which is def yeah, it's definitely the safer option to stay here. Obviously, it was a little bit disappointing because I was looking forward to um, traveling again. I was planning on vlogging the whole experience. That would have been a really fun video for you guys, but unfortunately, won't be doing that. But at least you guys get this close to competition content. Actually, hair is looking pretty good today. Although from the front, it almost always looks good, but in the back, I can never get it to look right. So yeah, that's what's been going on. The past couple weeks we've been trying to plan this trip and everything was very confusing and we hadn't really confirmed anything until the last minute. So as I said, we were supposed to leave this coming Sunday, but we didn't actually book the tickets until last Friday, like just over a week before. So I got excited for maybe two days and then we decided not to go. So it was, it was a very interesting few weeks trying to plan this trip. But again, this is my first time doing anything sort of competition related in 14 months, a long time to go without competing. Like usually I have maybe a two or three month break between seasons, so this 14 months is, it's a lot. <laughs> okay, I'm basically done with putting pins in my head. I think the bun looks pretty good today. I'll turn around, never looks good from the back though, just saying. I hope that was okay. See this part at the back always pops up and I can never get it down. But anyways, 
Next up, we have got hair nets. I usually put two hair nets. Here, I put it against the white. You can see the different colors, but yeah, I'll put the black one on first because I think my hair matches the brown one a little bit better. And here's like a dark brown, or like a, it looks pretty dark in this lighting. There we go. The black one fits really nicely. My brown one is a little bit ripped, so it's not gonna fit around perfectly. I don't know about you, but the worst feeling is when you wash your hair the night after a competition and your hair is nice and clean and then the next morning you have to destroy it by putting more gel in it. I don't know about you, but I that is the worst feeling, <laughs> which is what I had to do this morning. I'm just putting the second hairnet around. See, this one's not big enough to wrap around four times, but it's too big to wrap around three times. So I have to kind of gather the extra bits and just pin it down. I usually just put a few more pins so it's nothing sticking out. I think that is good for now. Usually at this point I just put a bunch of hairspray and then clips and then more hairspray. It's my giant bottle of hairspray. I found a little connector for my ribbon stick that I lost a few weeks ago. And my clips. And with clips, I usually just comb the area, then put the clip in. Oh, if you see me looking over here, I have a mirror. My hair is kind of very bumpy, but I guess this will have to do. Hair is done. I don't actually, ew, I don't really like the shape of my bun today, but it's close enough, it'll have to do. That was like record time, I've only been recording for like 20 minutes. Okay, we're gonna move on to makeup now, and I know you guys have been asking for makeup tutorials, but I really don't know how to do makeup. All I know how to do is what I do for competition. Like, I really know nothing about makeup, so don't trust me to give you a makeup tutorial. Yeah, so in terms of competitions, I don't know when I'm going to actually compete again. I know there are challenge cups in the summer, so those could be possibilities if the situation gets better, but um, I'm not sure if or when I will be competing again. I apologize in advance for all the weird faces I'm gonna make while I'm doing my makeup. Okay, I'm gonna try to answer some of your questions now. I left a little post on my community tab. I had a lot of people ask what the hardest thing about rhythmic gymnastics is. Like, some people asked just in terms of elements and stuff. Some people just said in general in the sport. Okay, in terms of elements and stuff, the hardest thing is not necessarily the elements itself because you can kind of choose the elements like in terms of body difficulties and also masteries and risks that you put into your routines. But I think it's also just trying to combine them all at like a really high speed and figure out how to like maximize the value of your routines. That's the hard part. Because with this code, the key is to pack your routines as much as possible, get as much difficulty as possible and execute it as perfectly as possible. For me, one thing that I've really struggled with is consistency because I can do good routines, but I can't do them consistently. But also, especially this time since I haven't competed in so long, dealing with kind of nerves around competition like yesterday wasn't even a competition it was just me filming my routine to be sent in for judging and feedback basically by the time i got to my third routine i was like shaking uncontrollably my hands have been shaking like not just from nerves but i think also when i get really tired my hands get really shaky which my nutritionist said it's probably from low blood sugar so i don't think it was entirely that yesterday but i think also nerves like my hands get really shaky and i like couldn't hold my ball my hands also get really sweaty so can't hold the ball. Okay, I have done foundation and primer so far. I'm gonna start my eyeshadow now. So I have this that I bought a while ago, but I bought this one recently and I kind of want to start using it, but yeah. And another big challenge for me has been dealing with like body image and weight and stuff in, um, in this sport. I know you guys have asked me to make a video on it. Um, I'm trying to think about what I would say. So those are like the three things I'd say are most challenging for me, so body image, the like competition nerves, and the being able to do everything consistently. <laughs> and in terms of the hardest, someone said moves and poses, so specifically like 
that sounds like body difficulties to me. It's weird, like for me, I can do the elements that require more flexibility, like ring turn, MG, MG balance, <laughs> and like ponche turn and all that stuff, but I'm not really good at the simpler difficulties, like attitude turn. I can do maybe two. Oh, the hardest thing- I'm not very good at jumps to be honest. Um, the only jump I really have in my routines is split arch jump and that's the only one I'm good at. So for me, the jeté en tournant, those jumps have been hard for me. And I don't even want to attempt MG turn. I have that balance in all my routines and I'm pretty good at it, I think. But um, I'm terrified to try the turn. So I don't think I will be anytime soon. Opinion on your supporters and subscribers. You guys are so supportive and so sweet. I, I'm so grateful for all of you guys. Yeah, thank you guys for all the support on this channel so far. It's almost been a year. I posted my first video at the end of May, uh, beginning of June. So we're coming on a year now. That's crazy. And yeah, you guys have been so supportive. So it's it's been really great. Please don't come at me if I'm doing something wrong. I've said this multiple times, I have no idea what I'm doing. But I mean, if you wanna give me some advice on how to make my makeup better, I'm open to that as well. But please don't like come at me in the comments. Opinion on male rhythmic gymnastics and if it should be added in competition. Yeah, I haven't seen much of male rhythmic gymnastics, but I've seen a couple people in AGG. I've seen some clips here and there on Instagram and I think it looks really cool. Like I'm not against it at all. I think it'd be cool to see it, I guess, included more in competitions. I know with makeup, you're supposed to put like a darker color on the outside and then kind of get lighter and then towards the corner of your eyes you do like the lightest color so i know that much so that's what i'm doing and then i like blend it and repeat it a few times again until i'm satisfied with how dark it is how many hours do you train per day um per day usually four or five hours you know what a lot of you guys actually ask for like tips on jumps and stuff and i've been trying to think about it but i think like anything with jumps i've noticed the more the more you do it the easier it gets so I think also starting off with small jumps like little hops to kind of work on generating that power is good at the beginning and then getting into the bigger jumps and also doing it consistently because I know like I don't like doing lines but I notice like the more I repeat it, the, the more often I do lines, the easier the jumps get. So I think like anything else, it just comes with practice and consistency. What do you do about body hair in periods while having to wear just a leotard? Yeah, um, hi, if you're a guy watching this, feel free to skip this question i'm not very comfortable talking about this but anyways um with body hair i just like shave down there and hope for the best <laughs> and then in terms of my periods i just wear pads and again hope for the best because i i can't put it i can't wear a tampon i've never tried well i probably will eventually but like i don't really want to try but usually my period is only bad on like the first and second day and then otherwise it's like almost non-existent i just usually hope and pray that the first or second day of my period is not a day that i'm competing if it is then i just pack extra pads with me that's all i can say it's definitely a awkward topic but i know it's important because a lot of people go through this as well so if you have any more questions feel free to ask in the comments. I'll probably be more comfortable typing them rather than talking about them, but yeah. I think this is good for now. Um, I'm gonna try putting on some eyeliner now. This is my makeup right now. When I do eyeliner, I like to just start off by trying it with black eyeshadow just in case I mess up, I can kind of fix it. So this palette actually doesn't have black, so I'm going back to my old one and I'm just gonna try tracing the eyeliner. That's a little hack for you. I I've had a couple people tell me that this definitely helps because I know eyeliner is very tricky and a lot of people mess up, myself included, so if you can kind of do a practice test with black eyeshadow first, it definitely helps. What was your weirdest thing in rhythmic gymnastics? <laughs> I don't know about something weird specifically that's happened within the sport, but I know whenever we travel and we're carrying like our hoops and stuff, it's always funny to see what sports people mistake us for. Like, we were at a restaurant once, and people thought we were professional hula hoopers, because that's definitely a thing, um, because we were carrying our hoops. And my club that I'm at is called Jusco, and so we were wearing our team jackets that said Jusco, and people misread it and thought we did judo. Um, we were at the airport in 2016 on the way to Pacific Rim uh, Championships, and people thought we were like a soccer team or something. I don't know how that happened. Oh, I've had people think that our hoops, because they're in the hoop cases, they thought those were like trampolines. I'm like, 
How does that even work? Because like the trip, it's hollow. There, you, that can't be a trampoline. I don't know how they thought that, but those have happened. I think that's probably the weirdest thing just because at least in Canada, the sport is so unknown. So it's interesting to see what other people mistake us for. Any tips for gymnasts who are older or started later? I've had a lot of people in the comments throughout all my videos kind of asking like, I'm this age, is it okay if I'm starting later? Like, is it too late to start at this age? Can I still be a good gymnast? And I think you can still be a good gymnast when you're starting at a later age, but I think the most important thing is not to compare yourself to others because there are going to be girls that started when they were like three. Some of them started when they were babies. Some of them started, I don't know, when they're seven or eight. And there are going to be some that started at like 11 or 13 or something. Everyone's at a different point in their athletic career. So it's important to not compare yourself to others. Just focus on what you're doing. And if you're really passionate for it, it'll show and you can definitely do well from there. I know, and I know it's hard because I definitely compare myself to others as well a lot more than I should, so yeah, that's my best advice for anyone who's starting late. People said, which part of the training sessions do you like or dislike the most? What part of being a gymnast do you like or dislike the most? The most fun thing at training is when like the competition season is over, you have a bit of downtime before making new routines, and you just get to try out new elements. That's always so much fun. In terms of things I dislike most at training, like I said, I don't like doing lines, probably because I'm not good at jumps and it's tiring and I have bad endurance, so that's probably why. In terms of being a gymnast, I love being able to travel and compete stuff, obviously. It sucks that we haven't been able to do that for so long now. Also getting, getting to meet new people, like the amount of people I've met through this sport, it's insane. Some of my best friends are people I've met through the sport in terms of like gymnasts and fans and just people who love rhythmic gymnastics. It's it's great to see the community that, that has come together through the sport. In terms of things I dislike, probably like I mentioned, um, everything around body image, that's, that's no fun. I have been struggling with that, especially during the last year. I gained weight during quarantine. Like, I think that's pretty normal because a lot of people weren't, like we weren't training as much. We were just at home. Everyone was still trying to adapt to the new situation. This was last year. When I went back to the gym in June, I just thought, okay, whatever. I'm gonna go back to training normally. I'm gonna lose the weight and I'll be fine. Go back to the way things were in March, but it's been a year now. It's now April and I still haven't really lost that weight back and it is a little frustrating. Like I know I can't lose all of it back because one, I've grown. Also, I've been told I grew a lot in the past year. That's okay with me. Like I, I understand that my weight's not gonna be the same as it was last year, but like I grew this way, but I also grew this way. <laughs> so just trying to, I guess, accept that. And it, it's, it's really hard for me, honestly, this year. That's something I dislike about this sport, but I, I know it's not gonna go away because I think when I when I retire, I'm probably gonna gain more weight and I'm gonna hate my body even more. So I think it's something that's gonna be a never ending struggle for me and for a lot of other people. So wearing, starting to wear my suits again was not the easiest thing, I must say. Definitely very um, nerve wracking and uncomfortable in the beginning, but I'm definitely feeling better about it now that I've been trying on my suits more often. Um, I'm almost done with my makeup. I'm, I'm gonna fix my eyeliner again and put a little bit more on. And then I just have to do like mascara and blush and highlighter, whatever. Ooh. You know what? I actually kind of like my makeup so far. I don't know how well you can see in this lighting, but maybe I'll take a picture after and show you or insert it in the video. On a happier note, the Umbrella Academy cast is here in Toronto filming season three and I want to meet them. So hey, Umbrella Academy, if you're watching this, I want to meet the cast. Specifically David and Ritu, thank you. But again, we're in lockdown, so can't really do that right now. Hopefully they can get it done soon and then we can get a season three. We actually passed by some something that was filming. Um, like I was on the way home from the gym one day and I passed by um, a Christmas movie that was filming here. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I just wish it said Chroma because that's like the code name for Umbrella Academy, but yeah. done with my makeup. So this is my competition look, um, hair and makeup. 
Oh wow, I've been recording for just over an hour. So that's gonna be fun to edit down. Sorry if this video was really long, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys found this kind of like, I don't know, helpful or insightful into like how I do my hair and makeup, but also me answering your questions and this like little life update. That's about all I have to say. I gotta go in like 15 minutes, so gotta wrap things up here. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe down below if you're not already. Also, don't forget to turn on my post notifications so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week with a brand. I will see you guys next week with a brand new video. Bye.